Hi all, I have another fascinating game to show you from the TSEC Season 18 Super Final. This was in Round 17, Leela playing with the white pieces, Stockfish, Stockfish with the black pieces. We have E4 from Leela, C5. The opening book is actually in the Sicilian Nydorf variation. So A6, and we see here Bishop G5, E6, and now F4. This is a really sharp line. Bishop e7, now queen f3. White intends to castle queenside in this variation. Queen c7, and white does immediately now castle queenside. Now black doesn't castle into it, but we're still in the book given to both engines for the moment. Knight bd7, and now the very aggressive looking g4. b5, this is a very logical plan from black to facilitate bishop b7 and sometimes b4 and putting pressure on e4 sometimes. We have white volunteering the dark square bishop. So bishop takes f6, knight takes f6, and now g5. So tempo gaining, knight d7. And now there's a very, very interesting idea, f5. And I have seen this some years back. I thought it's quite an exciting variation indeed, because white's actually offering the g5 pawn here. It is a very, very interesting gambit, actually, probably... Uh, coming to think about it, you know, this would be one of the more respectable gambits because it's such a good compensation if black takes on g5. We have here knight c5. Some stem games uh, just for those theoretically interested. If castling, uh, there has there has been some games in this. Uh, there's been an online, uh, quite a high profile online game, maybe at a faster time control. Giri uh, managed to draw with the white pieces against Grizzchuk, even though Grizzchuk did castle kingside here, so this is on the castling. And uh, we have this position where it's gory, but uh, after knight e5, yeah, black didn't take on e7. It seems Grizzchuk uh, maybe was very theoretically prepared, and it's here he took on e7. He managed to actually get a draw there in the end in 44 moves. So it's not, it's not a default win for white, this position. Um, but that's one of you know a move. But the materialistic bishop takes g5 check. Uh, Alcina against Danny Gormali, British Grandmaster Danny Gormali in England 2019, uh, saw actually White win that game. There's the knight takes e6 here to factor in. If you look at that, it's hitting the bishop and also setting up that nasty pin. And White went on to win this position after knight takes e6 uh, later in the end game. In fact. Uh, it was actually not a middle game knockout. That was later at move 60. White managed to win there against high rated opponent Dan Danny Gormali. Uh, only slightly high rated. They're both about 2,500 at the time of that game. So anyway, it's uh, very theoretically you know, trodden. We have here knight c5. f6, g takes, g takes. And we're still in the book, believe it or not, given to both rook g1. And here it ends. The book has now officially ended. So... Stockfish on its own uh, territory now. I mean, thinking time plays the move h5. This has got a few things going for it, ruling out the use of the h5 square from white, which might pin that pawn as we saw sometimes, those ideas. Sometimes that's dangerous, maybe after some preparation or bishop h3. This diagonal and this e6 could be dangerous. But it also means, you know, bishop h6 is a protected bishop that could be useful check at some point. Uh, we have here a3, uh, rook g7 has actually been seen before in this position. This is a very dynamic move. You might think, well, what's this about? It's it's a very dangerous pawn if that's taken. Uh, this was in uh, the game Vasquez against Vallejo Pons, but Pons managed to win that game, actually. He, he actually took all the uh, positional pressure that White was throwing at him and did manage to win that later quite resourcefully in 53 moves. So yeah, we still there's still quite a number of games around here. A3 is played here, not rook g7. So Lila chooses A3 to suppress b4 from black. We have queen b6. Uh, there's another pawns game. This is actually a massacre game. I must show you it. Rook b8. Pawns was actually... Vallejo Pawns was on the white side against Wien in Bangkok to... 2016 and he played so violently here he played in this position knight takes e6 and then f7 check 
and then rook g6 and then brutal rook takes e6 really brutal stuff with the idea of knight d5 so they play queen uh yeah it's it's just it was a really brutal game he starts picking up a lot of the black material now with interest and the game actually ended here is about to pick up the bishop on f8 so a real you know carnage there that game with rook b8 but we see uh stockfish playing queen b6 here we have king b1 and now b4 and it looks as though you know stockfish's play is pretty direct you know just the double and, and threaten checkmate on b2 basically rook g rook g7 rook b8 so we can see clearly uh there's a certain logic to black's play and just ignoring this rook g7 here if it wasn't ignored uh you know say bishop takes then what happens you might be wondering it seems here white has a very interesting uh resourceful move in this position can you guess if i give you you know 10 seconds to pause the video what would you play in this variation okay knight f5 it protects that pawn it hits d6 if it takes knight d5 hits the queen and horrible things start happening for example like this and white's just clearly better yeah there's even that diagonal to exploit if, if not the pawn uh so that is a really sharp possibility yeah so um on that knight f5 if bishop d7 the knight takes d6 check rook d4 this is really really interesting using this queen as a tempo gain out and it seems white's in the driving seat in these variations uh like winning material sometimes or the queen yes <laughs> uh th yeah they're, they're not very good variations for black so uh we have here rook b8 so steering clear of bishop takes g7 we have now a really interesting move indeed from leader in this position which kind of emphasizes the black king still in the center and there are ways and means of addressing this attack on b2 which are very very interesting to consider can you can you guess what leader plays here for 500 points white's play here it's, it's it is actually a remarkable looking tactical move i have to say so white's play if i give you 10 seconds what does leader play in this position okay bishop b5 it's a real uh disconnection move disconnecting the whole b2 issue rook takes his plate knight d takes b5 a takes and now now that uh some material has been invested here the king in the center becomes the issue with this next move can you guess what is played here if i give you 100 points so 10 seconds for 100 points white's play here okay e5 it kind of liberates the queen on this key diagonal to try and get it to that king uh, bishop b7 is played if d takes just to see what happens queen c6 and then there's queen a8 check and then this is checkmate so that's pretty clear cut actually if queen c4 as an example queen a8 knight b7 knight takes b5 and this is dangerous can you see what white could play in this position which is a real killer move uh, for 500 points 10 seconds what would you play as white here just to show the amazing tactical resourcefulness of this position white is cutting some escape squares of that black king here there's a super tactic here white to play here okay the super tactic is a virtual check it's threatening a, a killer double check and of taking then knight c7 is is checkmate believe it or not because the pawn stopping that escape score is checkmate uh if we look at this again with d5 then actually can you see what white plays here which is pretty convincing 100 points 10 seconds white to play here yes you must smash through with knight takes d5 queen takes setting up the battery setting up 
twin frets of queen e8 and queen takes f7 mating. So here queen takes. That's no good for black either. So um and if knight d7, yeah, just taking here. And then rook takes d7 as mating. So it's pretty brutal stuff, really. Uh, so this is a good move in the circumstance. Bishop b7. And what's the point for white here? This isn't so easy, is it? We have a calm queen e3 move. Very, very interesting. Queen c4 is played. It's a super complex position, really, it seems. If d takes, queen takes, then the queen's got access to b8. Black doesn't really want to allow this queen poking into that back row. And believe it or not, here there's a, a really nifty idea which I found staggering in this position, but it is logical. I wonder if you can guess the attacking move here. A quiet killer move for 100 points if I give you 10 seconds. How can you get to the back row is the clue. Okay, believe it or not, rook g3 is good here. Just to sort of double and, and try and get to d8. So here, uh, queen b8, you know, anytime the knight moves, you've got queen b8. But what does actually black, you know, do in this position? If queen a5, then just double. And this is going to distract that queen away. You know, for example, like this, queen takes. And it's it's going to be winning, this variation anyway. So yeah, it's it's really uh, interesting stuff. If uh, d5 here after queen e3, then rook d3, and then b4, this is really interesting. It seems white's better off here. If bishop takes g7, then after queen e3, then taking, and rook d4, and queen h6 now, there's a different issue about queen h8, believe it or not. If black tries to be resourceful here, uh, white takes time because there's always king e7, but takes time to do some other damage like this. And white's just better here. Yeah, these are very, very interesting uh, variations. So queen c4 was deemed by Stockfish the best of the best. We have e takes d6, knight d7, and now queen a7, queen c6 protecting the bishop. And now rook g5. Yeah, this rook's coming in to try and get to that back row or hit b5. Queen a6, queen d4, bishop c6. Now queen d3 targeting b5 again. Focal point. Knight b6. If knight takes f6 here as an example, then knight takes b5, threatens knight c7 check. And here, this is very nice. Yeah, there's carnage here and destruction. White is better off. This is quite amazing stuff. You know, there are mating opportunities like that. It's it's overall it's it's better for white. White gets the better of it. So knight b6 was tried. And now d7, knight takes, knight takes b5. It seems here h4, queen b7, black is pretty tied down, knight d6. A couple of minor pieces come off. So it's a rook versus two knights in a way, but white also, you know, has an extra pawn. Uh, King c8, rook d3, and there's a nasty threat of sometimes rook b3 and rook c3. So the queen uh, offers the exchange, queen a3, e5, queen e7, knight b6. And now, you know, leader obliges, so winning another pawn. But this endgame scenario is not very nice at all for black. Look at this. This this is the two minor pieces are really struggling here now. It's three pawns up. For the moment, it's four pawns up here. This situation now, three pawns up, is just too much for the two minor pieces. This end game is uh, very difficult for black to manage. So we see here, uh, here rook f6, and now rook b5. This is a very high pressure situation to manage that pass pawn and the king's safety issues. And here, in fact, black is losing material after rook e3. And here, uh, black resigns. So it's a totally uh, razor sharp opening variation. It's one that I have seen in the past and was absolutely fascinated about it. 
you know it's probably one of the soundest gambits going that f5 to let you know bishop takes g5 happen but it's it's one which is quite entrenched in that whole variation quite deep in uh, so those gambits which are entrenched you're, you're hardly likely to get to play them uh, statistically but really uh, fascinating that um, this was such a, a an interesting start position very very tactical you could argue well argue well maybe you know it favors uh, stockfish but Lila did very well on the white side here to expose the king in the center a brilliant bishop b5 brilliant e5 concept uh, so what would happen in the next round so the next round with stockfish with the white pieces stay tuned I hope you got something from this video uh, it's a very very sharp razor sharp line in Sicilian defense maybe there's some philosophical pointers <laughs> although I'm having difficulty finding them yeah some very very tactical uh, disconnection tactics on the B file the king in the center with e5 liberating the pieces uh, being able to swing back the rooks the double on the d file to create common killer squares Th those those are maybe some of the key points that I, I see from this game uh, but let me know if you if you think there's other key points uh, to sort of get for our own games any philosophical points please do add them to the comments to help everyone with their chess uh, okay so if you want to check out my playlist bitly slash leader chess bitly slash stockfish chess there's a suave uh, chat forum chat room at kings crusher tv slash discord uh, and also you can challenge me for a game if you go to kings crusher tv register at the chess world site i'll be able to invite you for a game later or bitly slash chess world okay comments questions like shares subscribes with the notification bell all really appreciated thanks very much